But this is kind of the framework we use in the book for thinking about how we should look at any particular AI application. It's a two-dimensional figure. On one dimension, you have how well does it work? It, it, does it work as, as claimed, or is it overhyped, or does it not work at all, and is it, is it a kind of snake oil? But on the other dimension, we have the fact that you know, AI can be harmful because it doesn't work as claimed and it's snake oil, or it can actually be harmful because it works well uh, and it works exactly as claimed. So let me give you examples of each of those kinds of things. So let's start with the top right here. I mentioned those video interviews. Uh, I mentioned criminal risk prediction. Cheating detection is, of course, when uh, professors suspect that students are using AI, they might turn to these cheating detection tools, but they just don't work at least as of today, and they're more likely to flag non-native English speakers, and I've heard so many horror stories of students being falsely accused. Uh, as things stand today, that very much feels like snake oil to me. But on the bottom right, though, are things like mass surveillance using facial recognition. Historically, facial recognition hasn't worked that well, but now it works really, really well. And that, in fact, is part of the reason that it's harmful if it's used without the right guardrails and civil liberties and so forth. And then we talk about content moderation, which uh, we explain in what way it's overhyped. But basically, our interest in the book is everything except the bottom left. Um, those are applications, that simple things, for instance, like autocomplete that kind of fade into the background and really work well. Uh, and um, you know, our, our goal is to have an intervention so we can equip people to push back against AI that is problematic 